Hi, I'm Bob Hall, comic book artist, and I'm doing this video presentation for Constellation, uh, where I was going to appear in April as, uh, I believe it was April, as the uh, guest of honor. Um, and of course that didn't happen because of the uh, COVID-19. And so uh, we're doing this video um, chatting a little bit for their virtual presentation and my understand that it's more or less just to keep you uh, up to date on what they're doing and uh, to keep some interest going. It's good to have a con here in Lincoln. Uh, I have not done Constellation Con, so I understand it's primarily a sci-fi con and I'm primarily a comic book artist, although I've done a lot of sci-fi and uh, I'm hoping we'll be able to include a few uh, pictures with this video. I'll talk a little bit about what I've done. Um, I, uh, I started off in theater and went to New York. I was going, going to go to New York. I was on my way to go, to preparing to go to New York. I'm from here originally and I was going to try to be a director in New York. And I eventually figured out that um, to do anything in New York in the arts, you absolutely had to decide uh, to find some kind of marketable skill. And being very naive, when a friend of mine said, well, you've always drawn. Uh, I did a lot of scenery design and I was the poster maker for the theater department. Why don't you do comic books? Uh, theater storytelling, comic books are storytelling, surely you can do that. And so I uh, <laughs> I decided, hey, I'll, I'll learn to draw comics. And he gave me a bunch of comics. And I said, oh, I remembered comic books from when I was a kid. There were some pretty darn good ones. My favorite was uh, Carl Barks doing Donald Duck, uh, which sounds pretty simplistic, but it was brilliant. And I was pleased to find out that uh, people now think that Barks was a genius. Uh, so I had pretty good taste. But there were uh, there was other stuff that I liked a lot too that was pretty simplistic back in the fifties. And I thought, well, I can be bad. I can I can I can do bad comics. And so he gave me a stack of what was happening. Now this was nineteen seventy one, and comic books were undergoing a renaissance. And uh, some of the people you may know and some of you may not, Jack Kirby was doing something called The New Gods. Uh, Neil Adams, uh, sort of the father of the modern look of comic books, was doing everything. Uh, John Buscema, uh, the remarkable uh, draftsman, uh, famous for Conan, was, was in his heyday. Uh, Bernie Wrightson, a uh, great uh, horror artist and the in original inventor of uh, Swamp Thing uh, was uh, uh, doing his stuff and the Conans that this my friend was a Conan fan he gave me uh, Barry Smith's Conans and they were superb and lots of other stuff going on I can't even begin to talk about how good some of the drawing was and I said oh my god I can't do this I'm not good enough to do this, but I wanted to be. Then I saw it as a new art form and was determined that I would learn how to do comics. And so I kept putting a portfolio together and working on my draftsmanship and trying to get better. And I did get better. I'd had a bit of experience and I got better. And I got good enough to get some work with Charlton, which was the low end of the comic book business, but lots of really good people started there. And you didn't get paid very much, but you, uh, and you had to do it all yourself, lettering and the whole business. Uh, and I did uh, several horror stories for them. And in the meantime, John Buscema, the fabulous uh, draftsman that I'd mentioned, probably the best drawer of action ever in comics, um, started a class in how to draw comics and uh, he had said he'd always wanted to teach and he put an ad in the back of uh, Marvel comic books and then you had to um, uh, bring a portfolio and show 
and uh, he was doing it. And you had to live in the New York area, and he was doing it, uh, no online stuff then, no online at all. It wasn't invented yet. And uh, this was at the... Uh, I can't remember which old hotel, it's one that no longer exists, but he took a, he took a conference room and um, taught for about a, nine months and would go in twice a week. And uh, John was amazing, amazing to watch this guy draw. And he brought in a lot of other people, Stan Lee for one, and uh, other people that you may or may not have heard of, Gil Kane, um, for one, and just a ton of other people who were, Marie Severin, uh, people who had been around forever, learned a lot. And I had the advantage that I was a little older, and um, I've always seemed to have been a little older in whatever I've done. And um, I uh, had had some experience, and I was just a little bit ahead of everybody else in the class. There were tons of people who were talented, but mainly fans of John's, and they hadn't had a lot of training. And uh, I hadn't had a lot of training, but I'd had some. And John, at the end of the class, decided that somebody from that class ought to get a job at Marvel. And so John got me a job at Marvel, and that's how I got into Marvel. And over the years at Marvel, I did... Uh, Oh, just about everything in their, in their stable except for um, the X-Men. I never did any X-Men. Did a lot of Avengers and uh, did a lot of group books, which I didn't like group books. Uh, you had to juggle all these characters. But people, because John was well, their best guy at doing group books, they figured I could do it because I studied with him. And uh, the first thing I did was something called the Champions. And one of the things that you find out when you first start to draw comics is that you have to draw all this stuff that you never thought you would ever have to draw. And it never bothered to draw. And some of it was just a mystery to me as to how to get it right and make it look like anything you eventually learn to construct just about anything out of your imagination. Um, you begin to look at things and see shapes. Uh, but I couldn't do that when I first started. And so it took me a long time to uh, get to the point where I was really any good at all. Um, I think it took about six, seven years before I felt I was tur turning out anything that had any quality to it. Um, but eventually, uh, I did get stuff. I was still working in the theater and, uh, for a while that was a boon to me because, uh, I didn't necessarily want to do a regular series long term. I wanted to be able to do theater as well and I wanted to be able to juggle stuff. So I did a lot of work for Marvel that was like two, three issue things. Uh, or team-ups, or um, movie books, something that were limited-run kinds of things. Uh, so I got, a, I got to do a lot of different kinds of stuff. I did the movie, what did I do? I did the movie Willow, uh, which was uh, George Lucas's follow-up to Star Wars, which uh, it was not a bad movie, but it wasn't, <laughs> it didn't do as well as Star Wars. Um, and you got to have some fun uh, with some things, like we got to go out to Star Walker Ranch, though, and see um, the rough cut. I also got to do um, uh, Spider-Man meets Saturday Night Live, uh, and got to go to 30 Rock and meet John Belushi and that gang, and uh, that was fun. Um, over the years, it's done strange things. Eventually, I did something uh, much years later of Shadow Man meets Aerosmith and got to hobnob with the band Aerosmith for a while. Fortunately, it was after they had all cleaned up their act. Um, so what else? So I did that for Marvel for a long time. I did a bunch of stuff eventually that I kind of thought was pretty good. Uh, but eventually the time was kind of changing and uh, I got a job coming back to Lincoln and running Nebraska Rep, 
which is a theater here in town associated with UNL uh, in the summers. And Marvel changed hands, different, different uh, editor. And I wasn't getting as much work from them. But Jim Shooter, who had been the editor at Marvel for a long time, was starting a company called Valiant. And so I uh, went over to Valiant and asked him if he wanted an artist. And he said, no, we don't need artists right now. We need writers. And he said, you've written. Uh, I had written a couple of plays. I wrote, wrote, a, wrote a version of Dracula that ran for quite a while. I ran for two years off Broadway. It was something of a hit. And uh, Jim said, I, so I know you can write. Why don't you write for us? And so I started writing a book called Shadow Man. He gave me a choice of some things to pick, and uh, I picked Shadow Man because it was a failed book. It, it, it just wasn't working. But it was set in New Orleans, and I figured if I can make it work, I'll have to go to New Orleans. That's good. And it was tucked away in a corner of the Valiant universe, so I wasn't going to be doing lots of crossovers with other characters, and I could kind of do what I wanted. I could do what I wanted because nobody knew how to make the book work, and I could start it from scratch. And so that's what I did, and by gosh, it worked. It, it was usually finishing in the top, at least in the top 100 sellers in the 90s, which was in the 90s, that was pretty darn good. And I did that for several years, and for various reasons decided to leave that book because they, they wanted to change the nature of the uh, character. We'd been taken over by a claim video, and they wanted to make a game out of it, and they wanted a different kind of character than I had been writing for um, the lead in the game. And I said, well, we'll get somebody else to do that, and uh, let me do something else. And so I got to do something called Armed and Dangerous, that was non-superhero, which was great fun. It was set in New York, I involved the Irish Mafia, and um, I got to use a lot of stories that I'd heard during my time in New York and incorporate them into that comic. And I think it's probably the favorite thing I've ever done. Um, now, about that time, we had been having a collector's market in the 90s, and collectors Collectors' markets are bubbles. They always burst. But this was a big one. We had been making a lot more money than we'd ever made in our lives. The companies were making more money, and they started catering to the collectors. The cost of comic books, to buy a comic book, went way up. And um, then it burst. The bubble burst. For some reason, everybody decides they have all the comics they want to collect. And... Um, the market fell to pieces, and Valiant went bankrupt. Marvel went bankrupt, too, if you can believe that. DC did not, because it was being, um, it was owned by Time Warner at the time. And so I, I, I went and found work at DC doing Batman stuff, and did several Batman special projects. And then that ended. My editor retired. And uh, again, I wasn't getting any work. I was back in Lincoln having, on family business, I found out at a, late, at a late age that I was adopted and I wanted to find out something about it. Found myself here rather than in New York. The cost of living in Lincoln all of a sudden looked very good. And I had the chance to start a Shakespeare theater. Flatwater Shakespeare started in 2001 and ran that for 15 years did comic book work off and on in the meantime. Um, but um, then it just was not, it was clear that, that, a, that a series with the big two was not going to happen. I've done some covers, etc. But um, after 15 years, that's a long time to run a Shakespeare festival, I decided to um, stop doing that and see what I could do in comics. And what has changed is the uh, Comic Con business. So a lot of us now make our living going to Comic Cons and drawing commissions for fans, which I do a lot of commissions. 
and I've been doing that for several years. Great, get to visit all kinds of places that I had never been, meet all kinds of people in the business that I'd always wanted to meet, and meet, get to meet fans, which is the great part about it. You finally get to meet the people who have actually liked your work and be amazed that people actually remember your work, and that feels good. Um, that, I hope, will pick up again um, in the uh, soon, but I think it's going to be at least six months, if not a year, before comic book uh, fan, uh, cons really come back. I had finally cracked. I always wanted to do some European cons and was invited to three this year, none of which happened, of course. Um, I hope Constellation comes back and that, that they have me back in next spring. I hope, I hope next spring is we're back. Who knows? Um, in the meantime, I am working on a National Science Foundation grant to do a weekly comic page online about the coronavirus for kids. And uh, you can take a look at that. I think they're going to post some along with this video. And um, you can see it at uh, www.worldofviruses.unl.edu. But hopefully they'll post that so you can find that. But if you just if you just go to World of Viruses and look for Corona Comics, you'll find it. And I'm kind of proud of that. I'm, it's nice to be doing something that's useful to people. And aside from that, what's new? Today's my birthday. Happy birthday, Bob. And um, keep watching for what uh, Constellation does in the future. And uh, have a great time this weekend.